Thank you very much for staying and welcome back to the program, The Market Plays. Now, the incoming NPP government is expected to renegotiate some sections of the IMF program with Ghana. This is what Joy Business has picked up from persons close to the party. George, we have asked more on some of the areas that could be touched before the program ends by December 2017. Ms. understands that one of the areas that could witness some changes is how government should go about reducing the budget deficit, which sources say could be reaching 9%, higher than what has been projected under the IMF program, and also the public debt, which has reached 112 billion Ghana cities as of September this year. Sources say the MPP administration sees the fiscal consolidation program as being too sharp, and they will push for it to be reviewed. They also report that the public financial management law, which is seen as one of the pillars under the IMF program, will be reviewed because the incoming administration doesn't see it as being too strong to bring about the necessary fiscal prudence in the MPP government going forward. Joy Business is also learning that the renegotiation will look at how the program can really work so the new administration will end the year with some good macroeconomic targets. Sources say there's been some agreement at the board level of the IMF to engage the MPP administration on their concerns. This, sources say, has been influenced by speculations that the IMF program is not actually working or getting the desired results when it comes to stabilizing the economy and achieving the required macroeconomic targets. That was George Biafé's report. Meanwhile, economist Dr. Joe Abbey is cautioning the next administration about the aspects it may review to ensure that, po that policy credibility is not compromised under the fund program. If you say you want to amend, there were some things that, frankly, we didn't prepare properly before we got into this thing. If you look at the whole way in which we got ourselves in the program, we were confidently saying that we have our own homegrown policies which we are following. Then came the announcement in August 2014 that the president had directed that, that we should seek the, uh, a bailout from the IMF. Many Ghanaians did not understand or ask, what was the meaning, what was the bailout? And my, my talking to people said, they thought we were going to get big bucks, three billion, four billion from the IMF. IMF doesn't dole out billions like that. So what we went really the bailout was the policy credibility because we have been setting uh, policy targets and missing them in 2013 and 2014. So, so that is what we went for. And the policy credibility says that when you, when you set a target, you are going to be committed to achieving the target. What we didn't prepare properly is that the private sector should have been on the roll as a source of jobs in a credible way, which means priority being given to the power supply problem. Mm. Okay, so if you don't solve it, it's talk. We need to get our private sector moving again and generating jobs, especially mm. if the financial constraints mean that government cannot really be employing 300,000 kids into the system. What are we telling them? So do you think it's, it's a prudent thing to, to go ahead and review some of the portions of the program I'd like or to, hold uh, on to it? No, but I'd like to see what portions we're talking about because um, um, the world is not good. You have got, you've got a program and you are being praised for sticking with the program. If you say, we've reached the point, okay, if you, ask, if you ask that question that bluntly, then it is up to the new government, the MPP, to spell out which areas they intend to reopen for negotiation. Because if you don't do that, you create uncertainty. Mm. Away from that, ADB Bank says its local interest is protected despite institutional investors picking up significant stakes in the bank. ADB earlier this week ended its initial public offering with some foreign firms securing significant interest in the bank, raising concerns that this institution could soon lose its Ghanaian holding. But speaking to Joy Business as the bank begins trading a little over 122 million shares on the stock market today, Managing Director Daniel Esiedu says there is no cause for alarm. All the uh, institutional investors are Ghanaian companies and then Government indirectly still controls over 50% of the of, of the shares. So I talked about government of Ghana 32.298, uh, 
uh, SIC's financial services, which we can assume to be uh, indirect holding for government, is it's about 10. And they have Bank of Ghana 9.5. So when you consolidate that, it's over 52 percent. So that clearly government still holds uh, majority shares in this. So we will still maintain our funding mandate uh, of, of ensuring that we concentrate on our Greek. Do you think that those concerns uh, is not an issue at all for those who are worried that uh, we have a foreign investor coming in and still not help in the, the focus of the bank at ADB? Like I said, it's, it's not a worry because once government is a majority shareholder in the bank, it's not a problem. And again, let me emphasize that all the other um, institutional investors are local companies, are local um, uh, investors, so it's not a problem. But the most important thing is that uh, government directly and directly controls the bank. All right, so on this same development, uh, correspondent George Biafé is currently stationed at the Ghana Stock Exchange, and we're going live to him for some updates on the sale of ADB Bank shares. Hello, good afternoon, George. Hello, good afternoon, yes, George. Yes, if you can, uh, yeah, Biafé, I can hear you, and if you can also uh, see me live on your shorts in studio, I'm coming to you live from the trading floor other Ghana stock exchange. Well, on a normal occasion, you see a lot of the uh, market house actually, or rep of these finance house and uh, brokerage firm doing their trading here. But there's a new system where they can actually trade from their offices. So uh, some days they do come here, some days they don't come here. Well, it's that day that they didn't come here that we're actually coming to you uh, live from the Ghana stock exchange. And talking about shares of uh, ADB, actually, as there have been some trading on the Ghana Stock Exchange. And we are I wouldn't pretend as if I know everything because I have someone who is here with me, and he's the Deputy uh, Managing Director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Mr. Echo Afezi. So, Mr. Afezi, tell me what has happened to shares of uh, ADB. We knew that about uh, almost uh, or more than 122 million shares was expected to go live instead of trading on the market. Tell me what has happened to shares of VDB as we speak right now on the Ghana Stock Exchange. Let me first of all welcome you to the floor of the exchange. Like you said, the broker is straight from the offices, so you don't find any activity here. Uh, with regards to ADB, uh, we had ADB shares uh, starting to trade uh, today. Um, uh, as we speak, 3,000 shares have been traded at the price of 2.85 CDs, a gain of 20 pesos from 2.65. That's uh, the price it at the IPO level. So that is ADB trading happening today. But going back, they've listed about 230 million shares on the market. Uh, they were able to raise about 325 uh, million, which is one of the biggest IPOs we've ever had on our market. And also ADB becomes the 40th listed company on the exchange, uh, 36 for the main market, then four for the alternative market, which is quite a long market and quite significant because we're looking out to get more companies so that we can cross the 50 uh, mark as quickly as possible. Um, we're going to have another uh, bank coming up next week, uh, so gradually we are moving on in terms of getting more listings on the market. Mm -hmm. And again, one would ask that, so there's been some price appreciation already with respect to the 3,000 shares that have exchanged their hands. Uh, the price has gone up from uh, two Ghana cities, uh, 65 pesos, to two Ghana cities, 85 pesos. Uh, what accounts for, for that one we ask? Uh, Oh, it's the first day of trading. Um, normally, prices uh, move up or down depending on uh, demand and supply situation. Uh, so uh, we hope to see what will happen when their results start coming out, financial results, etc. And also when we start seeing demand for the shares also on the market. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what's happening in terms of demand and supply. Are you also hoping to, to use uh, this listing to serve more as a springboard to whip up interest, some would say, in the stock market? Yes. Uh, once we start getting the macroeconomic environment getting better, especially with regards to interest rates, we're going to start seeing some interest in the market. Already we are seeing signs of interest rates on treasurables going down. Um, I think it's about 16% for 91. We'll start seeing the shift very soon, uh, maybe um, first quarter next year. Um, if we start seeing the trend going down, you're going to see more investors beginning to look at the long-term market again, especially the equity uh, market. So I think 
is the beginning of some good signs of the market recovering. Um, we're also going to see um, Access Bank, uh, all other things being equal, uh, should also come onto the market uh, next, next week. week. Some will say interesting times for the market. Interesting times, especially when you're in December. <laughs> and it's getting close to the end of the year. So it tells you next year, hopefully, we're going to see more companies coming onto the market. Finally, what do you also have for uh, investors, especially with the retail investors, who are, who are worried that uh, the market is not really, is not really an exciting time uh, to be on the market? Generally speaking, when you invest in shares, you should be looking at it from long-term angle. You're investing in long-term instruments. You should not always look at the short term. So for retail investors, markets go up and down. Markets will go up, they'll come down, they'll rebound, and uh, we're hoping that this market will come back up again. So, uh, viewers, that was the Deputy uh, Managing Director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, uh, Mr. Eko Afezi. But we have, uh, there was also another development on the stock market today. Bayport uh, Financial Services, that is a finance house, actually did what they call the facts behind the figure session. The Managing Director, Kofi Edu, actually announced that they are planning actually to merge that entity with CFC Savings and Loans Company. And basically, if things should work well and it should get the Bank of Ghana's approval work and all other things being equal, and maybe the first quarter of next year, that uh, measure, that marriage should be consummated for them to have a big uh, savings and uh, loans company. Uh, so from the Ghana Stock Exchange... Right, well, what's that, George? If before, you have before any you finally for go, me, I am... George, before you finally go, because you are with the Deputy Managing Director of the Stock Exchange, I would want you to ask him whether we are going to see any improvement in the composite performance of the stock market next year, projecting into next year, because we've had the market, you know, performing quite poorly um, in the latter parts of the, this year. Okay, so let me get back to the Deputy Managing Director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, uh, Mr. Ekoafezi, about what are you doing to... Uh, improve uh, the market performance because it's at this record low. Uh, what are you doing to whip up interest in the market for those who have investors in the market to get value for money? We're going to do a few strategic things uh, next year. Uh, one is to aggressively pursue listings on the market, get more companies to be uh, listed. Uh, we also try very hard to continually educate investors so that at least we can improve liquidity on the market. Liquidity is basically a function of buying and selling of shares. So if you don't have people buying or selling, then liquidity is low. Thirdly, uh, we want to increase the number of shares on the market. So companies are gradually being asked to float bigger or larger volumes of shares or higher quantities of shares so that we can have more shares being uh, traded on the market. The other last thing we'd like to do is to use technology. Uh, we're going to introduce more features in our system. Uh, we'll have what we call borrowing and lending. Uh, now that we have uh, the new securities industry law, uh, borrowing and lending is simply you borrowing the shares from people who are not uh, selling them or doing anything with them and um, um, going to the market uh, uh, to sell and paying back uh, later on. That's an interesting feature. We'll be looking at market making where we can have uh, institutions or intermediaries standing in there to buy and sell all the time to provide liquidity on the market. So these are a few things that we'll be introducing uh, next year to boost the liquidity on the market so that retail investors can see some activity on the market. So Bye. we have you heard from uh, the horses on Marv with respect to what they are doing to actually uh, whip up interest in the Ghana Stock Exchange going into 2017. So if you don't have anything, uh, we have uh, it's uh, been live from the trading floor of the Ghana Stock Exchange. It has been your anchor here, George Yaffe, as well as the Deputy Managing Director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Mr. Ekwaf, is taking off some of his busy schedule to actually be with us here on the trading floor of the Ghana Stock Exchange. We are All right, thank you, you very much, you George. We are for us. that update, George. We are bringing us up to speed with developments on the Ghana Stock Exchange today, where um, the, the ADB Bank has started trading its shares, expecting to trade over 120 million shares on the market as it seeks to recapitalize the bank. It's still on the marketplace and moving on, the latest bank to commence operations in the country, Premium Bank, has indicated its readiness to meet the new capital requirement. The Bank of Ghana has initiated moves to increase the minimum capital for banks to about 500 million Ghana CDs. There's more in this report. 
Formerly called City Investment Company Limited, it evolved into a bank after operating as a finance house with a focus on small and medium enterprises in the last 20 years. The head of finance and strategy, Ellen Abwa, tells Joy Business, the bank is well positioned to satisfy the new capital requirement despite being new in the industry. We raised um, 113 million. Okay, we came from a capital base of 7 million to get to the 120 million required of us to become a bank. What stops us from getting the additional one that Bank of Ghana is asking us to do? We've done it before, we can do it. Our shareholders are ready. In fact, we got the hands when we we're raising the money, so we knew. What was, what was in for us. We knew where it could go. So we'll move forward. And whatever steps, whatever things we did to raise the extra 113 million to get to where we are now, we can still use that and we will do it. Premium Bank yesterday announced beginning full commercial operations after receiving its banking license from the central bank sometime in the second quarter of the year. So what's the branch expansion strategy as a new bank? We have eight, but you know, in in this day and age and with mobile money, eight, um, eight branches across the country, Acro across um, the southern part of the country. We'll start with Accra, um, Kumasi, and Takaradi, and in the next one year, that is ending 2017, right? Yeah, but. You, you know, with mobile money and technology, the places it's going, um, having brick and mortar is not the only thing you can do. So yes, we will have some branches, but we will have a lot of technology as well. We'll have some branches, but we will also be using a lot of technology. I'm sure you are very much aware of what's happening with mobile money. It's, I mean, it's exploding. So with mobile money, um, with um, MNOs, you know, the mobile money companies, partnering banks, banks partnering, fintechs. I mean, the sky is the limit. There's a lot of things you can do without necessarily having a brick and mortar branch. Premium Bank has also reaffirmed its commitment to provide small and medium enterprises with tailored products and services towards boosting the economy at large. The African Center for Energy Policy, ACEP, has warned the country may, may face more power crisis by next year. In a report released by the energy think tank, the danger of the power sector faces in 2017 could be attributed to a potential disruption in gas supply as a result of the departure of the FPSO Kwame Nkoma for major maintenance works. In its latest release, the African Center for Energy Policy, ASEP, cautions the danger the power sector faces in 2017 will be attributed to a potential disruption in gas supply. The report, titled Beyond 2016 Elections, Energy Sector Priorities, further warns that fuel supply insecurity is likely to continue in 2017. It pointed out that the new administration must tackle as a matter of urgency challenges in the power sector since power supply from the nation's hydropower sources are still dim. The report explained that the insecurity has been heightened by a low supply of hydropower due to low levels of water in the Akonsombo and the Kwong retrofitting projects. The report explained that the insecurity has been heightened by low supply of hydropower due to low levels of water in the Akonsombo Dam and the Kwong retrofitting project. According to the Outlook, quote, Fuel supply has become more challenging as thermal generation will continue to dominate the sector, unquote, attributing the inability of the Asogli power plant to suspension of gas supply from Nigeria due to Ghana's indebtedness to the West Africa gas pipeline WAPCO and NGAS. ASEP projects a lot of uncertainty for the sector due to the decision to permanently moor the FPSO, which will lead to suspension of oil and gas supply from the Jubilee fields for three months starting from April 2016. With the FPSO down, power supply from Ameri and Abwazi power plants could be compromised, even though government has promised to substitute Jubilee gas with 10 gas, ASEP contends that at 50 million standard cubic feet of gas, 10 will not be enough to completely substitute for Jubilee gas as most of the non-associated gas found in the Trinibua Reserve will be ready in late 2017. Now, some people have been sharing the expectations of the incoming uh, MPP administration ahead of its inauguration on the 7th of January this year. 
dominant among these is the desire to quickly put in place measures to solve the unemployment situation among the teen youth population of the country. The MPP during the campaign period made many promises, including the creation of a dam in every village and provision of jobs for the people. Should lift the ban on employment and the government centers. I think that will help. That will help put money in the youth's pocket. Yes. If there are a lot of people sitting at home doing nothing, so if they lift the ban, people will be employed. And if they are employed, um, they will get work to do. And if they get work to do, they will get money in their pockets and they will be able to purchase, which means the market women will also be able to make some money. And one thing that I want this present government to do that is to revisit the old factories and rehabilitate them. Any viable one, the one that will help the nation, you should what, and rehabilitate it. And also, the new pro the project that the, uh, the previous government have done, they have not completed, and you feel that it can help the nation, you should uh, continue, uh, continue the project. If you do that, then it will help the unemployment uh, situation. It seems like most of the youth face problems acquiring their, like, getting jobs and the rest, and if the government will try and and help uh, university graduates to get their own startups, like give incentives to banks who give uh, loans to entrepreneurs or young people who have vision, who have the capab capability to establish their own businesses so that they can push the economy forward. We want to speak about the employment because most of the youth out of school are not employed, and that is a recipe for other social vices. Uh, so I would wish that the incoming government to give employment to the youth. A lot of them are unemployed. And those were some expectations uh, of a section of the public on the incoming MPP administration as it gets inaugurated on the 7th of January next year. That's a wrap for this afternoon's program of The Marketplace. And uh, my name is Manu Abuaji. We have to join me again same time tomorrow for another edition. Good afternoon.